This is Dr. Robert Gish. I'll be presenting today to you as a patient the story about fatty liver. This may also be called NASH or NAFLD. We're going to talk in great detail about really reasons for you to change your life, to change your lifestyle, or to help a loved one or somebody who you're supporting, to get them to decrease their weight, to change their life, to decrease the risk of fatty liver and its consequences, such as cirrhosis. The liver, as you know, is located under the right rib cage and weighs about two to three pounds. It's a complex organ. It has been known and recognized historically dating back three, 4,000 years. A little bit of an expanded picture of that liver, nice brownish red color, and it's connected to the gallbladder and spleen and blood vessels that go into the liver surround the intestine as well. Liver tests are very important. These are liver enzymes, not liver function tests, specifically AST and ALT. In fatty liver, these are going to be elevated, as well as alkaline phosphatase and GGT. Liver synthetic tests are, are well, commonly called or grouped with liver enzymes, but true liver synthetic or liver function tests are going to be bilirubin, albumin, and INR. INR is a coagulation test. Albumin keeps you from swelling up. Bilirubin, if elevated, makes your eyes turn yellow. And these synthetic tests that we're talking about really don't become abnormal until late when people have cirrhosis and advanced liver disease. So markers of fatty liver, could be elevated liver tests. Alkaline phosphatase and GGT may be a little bit higher than ALT and AST. Normal liver should be this reddish brown color that you see here. This is fat, just general fat around the intestines. But once people get overweight and get fatty liver, the liver starts looking the same color as that fat around the intestines with dire consequences in some patients. Again, the liver should be nice reddish brown, smooth surface, again, reddish brown as well. And in a normal liver, this is a cartoon of a microscopic picture of the liver. There should be no fat in this liver itself. Again, we'll show you some better pictures, but keep this in mind as the framework, what a normal liver looks like. Again, normal liver, these are liver cells, solid, kind of pinkish purple color. And in a moment, we'll talk about what fatty liver looks like and how that is so different than what a normal liver looks like. Here, we have fatty liver. It's bringing in inflammatory cells and causing a chronic hepatitis that is now going to fall under the name of NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, NASH. This is the disease state that puts a person at high risk for developing cirrhosis. Again, you have fat droplets here forming scar tissue here. Why do we get fat? Well, a lot of it's behavior. Way too much fructose, too little exercise, too many calories for somebody's metabolism. Everybody can lose weight. The basic premise is eat less and exercise more. This will change your life. This will change your lifespan. We'll talk more about that as we move through this presentation. Fatty liver is associated with all sorts of bad things. Cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, strokes, fatty changes in the pancreas, changes in the thyroid, high iron stores, even weird things like polyps of the colon, gout, polycystic ovaries in women, diabetes, vitamin deficiency, and bone disease. So we really got to change our life, change our lifestyles. We'll talk about how to affect weight loss and improve fatty liver as part of this presentation. Fatty liver can bring in inflammatory cells, as we talked about, build up scar tissue that can result in cirrhosis. Again, a normal liver, brownish red color, fatty liver in a subset of patients will cause cirrhosis, liver failure, liver cancer, death, and need for liver transplant. Ask your provider, what is the stage of your liver disease?
Fatty liver can build up scar tissue in different parts of the liver. But when we get biopsies, our sampling's pretty accurate, 95, 97%. Hepatitis C can cause fatty liver as well. It's an interesting overlap how hepatitis C changes fat metabolism in the liver and maybe one of the pathways to causing cirrhosis. Another picture of cirrhosis. Once people have cirrhosis like this, you often can't tell the original cause. The fat may be gone, sort of like a hit and run idea. So intervention early, early diagnosis is very, very important. A picture of cirrhosis with a camera, laparoscopy, camera in somebody's abdomen. Again, you can't tell what the cause is, but this is what a fatty liver would look like. Very late, late stage cirrhosis. The liver biopsy is the gold standard. You're gonna sample a tiny amount of the liver, but with 95, 97% accuracy. But your provider needs to get the right length, the right number of biopsies, use the correct needle, and come back to making the right diagnosis. We typically do a biopsy under ultrasound guidance, two passes with a tiny little needle in the liver. The risk, chance of dying is less than one in 13,000. Chance of serious complication is less than 1,000. Yes, we use this for hepatitis C, but we can use it for NASH and many other diagnoses. We're again gonna do this ultrasound guided, make sure we don't hit the gallbladder, lung, kidney, or colon that sits in this area. Done properly, again, serious risk, less than one in 1,000 procedures. We can get a biopsy through the neck vein. That's called a transjugular liver biopsy. And here would be two passes just to show that we get adequate sampling. We can check out the right level of fibrosis in the liver and get you an accurate diagnosis, prognosis through correct staging. This is a bad biopsy on the left, a pretty good biopsy on the right. I'd like to see one that's a little bit wider. This is probably done with an 18 gauge needle. Standard of care now is 16 gauge. You can watch a liver biopsy on YouTube. Dr. Doug Dietrich posted this biopsy so you can watch how it's performed if you want to before you go in for your biopsy. But for fatty liver, we don't have to do a biopsy on everybody. We can make the diagnosis at least by inference, indirectly, through a CT scan or ultrasound, or if somebody weighs 300 pounds, their liver tests are high, and we've looked for other diagnoses, we can often diagnose fatty liver clinically and do a biopsy if there's a question, if we need motivation, if we need education. Yes, fatty liver can result in liver cancer. This is what a liver cancer looks like. Scan, CT scan showing liver cancer. Fatty liver, a scourge of our country. 60% of our adult population is overweight. Between 7 and 15 out of 100 patients who are overweight who have fatty liver are going to get cirrhosis. It will be a leading cause of transplant and liver-related death, probably starting in about one decade from now. Eat less, exercise more, lose weight. Everybody can lose weight through changes in lifestyle. Let's prevent NASH. Let's prevent progression of NASH to cirrhosis and its terrible outcomes. Thank you.